Well, I'm Daniel, and welcome to the Amuna Project. We here at the Amuna Project are continuing in our series of videos with respect to inspiration, education, information, guidance, advice. And I want to look at a word, um, a verse uh, in uh, the Torah, in Bamidbar, in uh, the book of Numbers, um, chapter 1, verse 2. Take a census of the entire assembly of, of the children of Israel according to their families, according to their father's household. Now Rashi explains that because the Jewish people are so dear to Hashem, so dear to the Creator, he counts them frequently in the Bible. There are many uh, times where a census uh, is taken. Well, there's a problem. Not a, a problem, but a, something that you wanna, I want to point out. At the time of this verse, uh, the Mishkan um, had been erected, had been uh, built, been established, and um, that was on uh, Rosh Chodesh Nisan, the, the first day of the month of Nisan. The census, however, takes place a month later, uh, Rosh Chodesh Iyar, the, the first of Iyar, 30 days later. If the Jews are so uh, important to, to God, how come he waited a month? Well, there's a couple of people making uh, comments on this. Sifse Chachomim says, well, it takes 30 days to establish a residency, right? So uh, the Shekhinah, the, the, the Divine Presence, basically dwelled, lived in the Mishkan, in the tabernacle, for 30 days, and God officially resided, and therefore he could take a census. Um, Rabbi Shmuel Vosner says that during Pesach, which happens during the month of uh, of Nisan, the, the Jewish people are elevated to a higher level, a higher madrega. And uh, when the Jews felt themselves that they were on a higher plane, that's when, uh, that's when God uh, decided to, uh, to count them. And it was the Shlono Rebbe um, who says that the Jewish people, Israel, uh, as, a, as a whole, uh, has a distinctiveness about it that um, that is always there even when they don't look Jewish when they don't act Jewish there's um, there's a distinctiveness that stands out and he uh, and he illustrates this by means of, a, of an analogy a parable uh, there was a man a poor man he, he had a chicken he liked this chicken a lot he just there was something about this chicken, he, was, he just thought it was great. One day, a ganif comes by, a thief comes by, steals a chicken. The man's upset, but he figures out, well, I bet you that if I run to the house of the shoichet, the ritual slaughterer, I'll wait there, and then when I see someone carrying my chicken, I'll confront him, that's the ganif, that's a thief. That's exactly what he does, he hangs around by the shoichet's house, Ritual Slaughter's house, and certainly, 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 eventually what happens is a man, someone from the neighborhood, someone from the shtetl, comes in and he's holding a chicken that looks kind of like the man's chicken. Its appearance had been altered, but the man could tell, it's my chicken, and he confronts the man. He says, you got my chicken, you stole my chicken, you got a few thief, you stole my chicken. And this is what are you talking about, this is my chicken. He says, no, it's not. I can tell my chicken. He says, does it look like a chicken? And the bird was flopping around. Once the man was near, the, the chicken could tell he was there and got very excited. Does it look like a chicken? He says, no, no, you've altered his appearance. You plucked some feathers. You trimmed the, the feathers on his head. Uh, you've altered its appearance, but I can tell it's my chicken. He goes, nonsense. If it doesn't look like a chicken, does it act like a chicken? Is your chicken all hyper like this? He says, no, no, it's upset. Uh, it's my chicken, I know. So what the man says to the ganif, to the thief, he says, tell you what, put the chicken on the floor. Put the chicken on the floor. You leave it alone. Don't make any motion toward it. And I'll stand here and I won't do anything. And you'll see that when the chicken is alone, by itself, with no one around, who's it going to come to, me or you? And the Slonim Rebbe says, this is kind of what happens at judgment. 
when our souls are in front of the heavenly court. The accuser says, this, uh, this soul belongs uh, to us. It doesn't belong in heaven. And the heavenly, uh, the, 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 the angel, Michael, I believe, who um, argues for us, says no. It's, it's, it's a Jew. It's, it belongs here. It belongs with the Creator. What are you telling? What are you talking about? Is, does it look like a Jew? Does he have a yarmulke? Does he have payas? Does he have a beard? Does he wear tzitzes? It's clearly not a Jew. It doesn't look like a Jew. It doesn't act like a Jew. It, uh, it's one of mine. And the uh, archangel admits, you know what? You're right. It doesn't look like a Jew. It doesn't act like a Jew. It's uh, not spiritually correct from the looks of things. But tell you what. You leave it alone. You, the Yitzhahara, Sutton, leave it alone. Don't do any blandishments. Don't try to influence it. And we in heaven will stay the same. We'll do the same. We'll leave it completely alone by itself. And we'll see who it goes to. Us or to you. And that's, um, that's how the Jewish people are. And so no matter how estranged we may be, and no matter how we may not look or act in a way that uh, is perhaps more correct, we remain our dis distinct. We retain that distinctiveness uh, no matter what. We're going to be doing more videos along these lines. Uh, please come back. Please watch. Please learn. And until next time, on behalf of the Mono Project, I'm Daniel, and thank you so much.